Hello, welcome back to Shooka Shed Motors. I'm Ewan. As you saw in the last episode, we were continuing work with Shooka Shed Mark II. And today is an exciting day, because today I'm going to start going up. I'm going to be using these uh, 75 mil square fence posts. Um, basically, there's going to be one at 120 centimeter intervals, and in between it, uh, so halfway, so it's 60 centimeters, um, there will be a slightly thinner upright as well. Um, so, sort of standard wall spacing, and then that should make it easier when I board out the inside of it because the standard sheets should fit fairly easily. So, the first job is to cut these to size and fix the back wall ones because the way they're going to be fixed is to this blockwork wall. Um, the ones at the front are going to be in brackets uh, secured to the concrete base. So number one, cut these and start fixing them. for a couple of hours work that's all the uprights in the back wall and the uprights on the right wall right wall right wall um done uh, they're just basically secured to the blockwork wall and then um they're level they're true so they'll get tied together with cross pieces and there's also going to be slightly slimmer uprights uh, at halfway stages between the bigger ones um, but that's for another day because it's getting dark and I'm tired. Um, it was a bit of a pickle trying to get them up to be honest because trying to get them straight and drill the holes into the masonry and get them all true at the same, you know, drill the holes into the masonry and get them true at the same time. That was the most time consuming part of it was just getting them true but um, it is quite critical and now that they are straight uh, it should make the rest of it go up a little bit quicker, a little bit easier so that's what I'm going to do another day. Good morning, today I'm going to continue work on the framework. Um, I've done the back wall so now it's doing the front wall and basically the back wall was bolted to the block work whereas the front wall I'm going to secure to the slab using these. Um, these are sort of standard fence post fixings uh, but what I've done is I've cut the front edge off of them so that <coughs> they sit against the slab like that and don't overhang and the damp proof course will be under the weather boarding that goes along the outside just to keep the slab sealed um, and then the one at the corner I've taken both edges off it so there are bolt holes on the inside as well that I'll use for bolting these to the concrete and then it should just be a case of slotting the uprights into them. So with that now fixed to the concrete slab, we can get our post and slot it in, like that. It'll obviously need driven in, but you get the idea. That should hold it nice and solid. So I just have all the rest of these to drill and fix. So I better go on with that. <laughs> So that's uh, the uprights along the front wall in place and um, they're obviously just a little bit higgledy piggledy just now um, once they get tied together they should all straighten out and I can make sure they're plumb vertical um, I think there's just a few imperfections in the slab 
around the edges that are causing them to, when I bolted down the brackets, just to be a bit off, but they should all be able to just pull them back into position. And um, this one, for example, just pull back and that one will push forward. So not worried about that just now. Um, these ones are a little bit more complicated because the roof slopes down from the, the front to the back. So I need to figure out what height to cut the posts to before I fit those. Um, it's just three of them, I'm not going to worry about them just now. And then uh, the reason these two are closer together is this is the partition um, here for the sort of store at the back of the workshop. So I need to put in an upright roughly here uh, in order to do that and then partition this section off. Um, but again, that's that's uh, that's down the line. Um, this is looking good. It's amazing once you get the uprights up, you get a scale for the place. It's going to be it's going to be a good size. I can't wait to get this all boarded up and see what what it feels like inside. So in order to figure out what height I need the sloping uprights to be, I've fixed this piece of string. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I've got a bit of string going from this one taut to that one over there, and that gives me basically the shape and the profile of the roof here. So I just need to measure from my post bases to the string and I know what length to cut my posts. Amazing what just putting these posts in does. It really gives you a sense of the shape and size of the building. Really cool. It's nice. I like to see the framework go up and, and get a real perspective for it. I think it's going to be a really good sized workshop. I'm pretty chuffed with that. Um, it doesn't impose too much on the, on the garden as well, which is... Well, it does impose, but it doesn't impose too much. <laughs> so now that all the main uprights are in place, I've got the smaller uprights to put in. The main ones are 120 spacing and these ones will be 120 as well, but essentially 60 centimetres from the main uprights. And then they'll be tied together with dwangs. I don't know, that's a, that's what we say in Scotland, but I'm not sure if there's a different term for it elsewhere, but dwangs are basically the horizontal pieces between the uprights. And so these are going to go in with the dwangs kind of holding them all together. Not so much structural, these ones more just sort of giving a little bit of rigidity to the whole structure. Uh, so that's my next job is to cut these to size and start fitting those with the, the horizontals. So I've sort of worked my way along the back wall here, putting dwangs in uh, 60 from the bottom and 15, between 15 and 20 from the top. It's, they kind of chop and change a little bit, um, just for the sake of getting the screws in. Um, 
but it's actually not that bad because when the when I board this out you won't see any of that and it's all within tolerance for a sheet of, of ply to be able to be screwed on and um, so that's not a big issue uh, it's I think it's fairly standard practice for putting drawings in as you put them in offsets so you can get screws in at different angles and um, it saves putting them too many of them in just at a, a sort of 45 degree from from a corner if that makes sense anyway um it's a bit of a time consuming job and it's not very interesting so i'm just gonna go around and just put in these drawings and then i'll check back in with you when i've put in the majority of them which might take me a while <laughs> i might see you this evening i don't know So effectively, this is the shape. If you get that, we'll move back a little bit, get a bit more perspective. See the angle to the roof. I put one roof beam in over there. Gives you a bit of an idea for the slope. Um, and obviously because uh, it, it tapers to a triangle here, the roof kind of gets steeper as it goes along. So you get this nice kind of weird curve to it, um, which makes my life difficult because uh, well, it's a curve and carpentry and curves are never easy. Super impressed with this Evolution miter saw that I bought. Uh, yeah, uh, this isn't paid, they've not given me it for free, I paid full price for it. Um, just when it comes to like bargain tools, um, that seems to be a pretty decent brand actually. Uh, I didn't want to spend loads and loads and loads of money on like a top brand one, but I also wanted one that was going to you know, last me a bit. So this seems to come up trumps uh, when I looked at the reviews and then also Jonathan Hull uses one of these and he, you know, shouts about them quite a lot. So I picked one up and so far I'm really impressed with it. It's made my life so much easier with this. I've, you know, I couldn't imagine doing half of this, you know, just by hand. And not only that, but it makes your cuts all super straight and symmetrical so that when it goes together, actually it's a bit easier to keep things level and true. Um, taking the sugarly how to sugarly shed <laughs> but um no i'm sure there'll be there'll be a little bit of sugar to me after all all i've got to do is put the uprights in and put the dwangs in for the store at the back and um, but that shouldn't take me too long uh, this was really the bulk of the work was the rest of the workshop probably going to call it a day because uh, it's getting dark and i've Feel like I've done quite a lot considering this was uh, pretty much an empty slab this morning so yeah I'm trying to get uh, get the good footprint of the thing um, I'm pretty excited to see when the walls go on it and the roof goes on it just really get an idea for how big it is so uh, yeah I'm really pleased with it I can't wait to move in here and get get started building stuff with the, the new space I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this space well I do I'm gonna fill it <laughs> it's always that way where you've, you know you've not got enough space then you're really kind of frugal with your your uh, organization and things like that and then you get lots of space and things just get chucked about everywhere but i'm gonna try and resist that temptation anyway uh, as usual please do give me a like leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel because it's really important and really helpful and hopefully i'll see you in the next episode when i'm going to be putting the roof onto this i'd quite like to get a roof on it so that it's waterproof at least a shelter so i can start doing the weatherboarding and things on the outside and then lining it on the inside that will be, I think, the next episode. So I'll see you then, and make sure you check out all the other videos on my channel. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and have a beer. Cheers.